So everyone knows Wonder Woman, right? She's one of DC's most iconic characters. But the version that we see on the big screens of Diana Prince that we all know and love isn't the only version of the character that exists, not by a long shot. So let's take a look at some of the weirder, the wackier, and the more wabbit based. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 insane alternate versions of Wonder Woman you won't believe exist. Number 10. Wonder Wabbit Believe it or not, Wonder Wabbit isn't even the only animal iteration of Wonder Woman in this list, although it is definitely the cuddliest. And as you might have guessed it, she is a bunny rabbit version of Diana Prince. The problem with the series was that it didn't lean hard enough into the animalization of its cast. Wonder Wabbit's powers have nothing rabbit-like about them. No powerful jumps, night vision, or increased hearing at all. So what exactly is the point of this then? Even Bat Mouse or Hawk Moose, both coming equipped with two animals to riff off, didn't go anywhere with it. A bit more commitment would have certainly helped this little wab it out. Number 9. Aurora Munro in a 1996 crossover event between Marvel and DC, Aurora Munro, better known as Storm of the X-Men, became that reality's version of Wonder Woman. On the surface, they seem like a decent fit to amalgamate, with similar morals and leadership qualities. Her origin is rather different here as well, as she's seen drowning in the Hudson before Queen Hippolyta saves her and takes her home, raising her as an Amazonian princess. As she gets older, it becomes clear that her mutation gives her the ability to control the weather, something the Amazons help her train. It's a nice combination of the two characters, as this version of Wonder Woman keeps the lasso of truth, but it's made from Storm's own harnessed lightning bolts. Despite these powers though, she must still keep her meta-mutant status a secret, while the Mars Storm wears it on her sleeve more proudly. Eventually though, she joins the Justice League X-Men and settles well. Once Aquamariner leaves, no prizes for guessing who he's an amalgamation of, she even becomes the JLX's leader. Number 8. The Blue Amazon Back in 2003, DC published three Elseworld comics for DC's biggest heroes, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman. For reasons known only to the writers themselves, each comic was based on a classic German movie. Now, all of this sounds like a bizarre idea, but they actually pulled it off pretty well. Also, while most people might not instantly be able to name much German cinema, Nosferatu used for Batman and Metropolis for Superman are fairly recognizable movies. With Batman lurking in the shadows and Superman's regular city being Metropolis anyway, both of them seem like fairly sensible picks. But the inspiration for Diana's story is a little less well known, being the 1930 flick The Blue Angel. Like all three of the Elseworld collection, it mixes a few other movies in there as well, mainly Metropolis itself, which is used to thematically tie the whole trilogy together. In this story, Diana is an amnesiac with no recollection of her past, and is working as an exotic dancer. It's certainly not a typical Wonder Woman story, but if you're looking to see the character in a completely different scenario, then look no further. Number 7. Becca Becca is one of DC's new gods, and though she isn't the most famous of characters, she's often seen helping the good guys and occasionally has featured heavily in several storylines. However, the movie Justice League Gods and Monsters cast her in the starring role, but with a bit of a twist. This was a parallel Becca, and she wasn't like the Wonder Woman of old. This Becca is part of a brutal Justice League keeping order on Earth. She takes the title of Wonder Woman while General Zod's son becomes this universe's Superman, and Dr. Kurt Langstrom becomes their Batman. It trans inspires that rather than a full-on evil version of Wonder Woman, which is plenty of those to come in the list by the way, Becca and the rest of this league have simply just gone too far. They're good people at heart, and much of the movie is about unwinding their conspiracies around them and correcting their past mistakes. It does seem a little bit like her title and good nature means she gets away with not being held accountable, but at least in the end she does the right thing. Number 6. Diana the Albino Ape Justice League of America The Island of Dr. Moreau is a mashup of, well, you figure it out. Dr. Moreau is a classic character by H.G. Wells, a mad scientist who transforms people into animals, believing it to be the next stage of human evolution. In this story, he doesn't actually capture the real Justice League, hence how he's still alive really, but instead has an army of creatures that are similar to them. These include Jabutus the Cheetah for The Flash, Falconus the Hawk for Hawkman, and Diana the Albino Ape as the stand-in for Wonder Woman. Being a gorilla, it certainly isn't the typical portrayal of Wonder woman, but she's actually closer in personality than many others featured here, as the story revolves around them being sent to Victorian London and it only gets stranger from there. The team of Manimals are investigating Jack the Ripper, who features heavily in the next entry as well. Here they discover that Jack is another one of Dr. Moreau's creations and turn on each other while questioning the nature of their own existence. Like the classic novel it spins off from, it's a lot deeper than the premise suggests. Number 5. Victorian The Victorian version of Wonder Woman is from a series called Amazonia, which is set in an 
an alternate version of the era, but the steampunk is cranked up to 11. Set between 1888 and 1928, it offers a fresh look at Diana, who we usually see in either ancient or mythological times, or even in our present era, leaning towards the future. It helps that most people have a fairly clear picture of the Victorian era, rather than scratching our heads like we would do with a Byzantine or Lake Quing era story. The stunning steampunk visuals certainly help build up the image for us too, that this story is going to be something very different from the off. Queen Victoria and her family have been murdered by Jack the Ripper, who, being of royal blood himself, ascends to become king. His rule is harsh and misogynistic, and is assisted by a now villainous Steve Trevor. Diana is captured by Trevor and forced to marry him, performing biblical stories at the theatre. She eventually adopts the title of Wonder Woman and leads an uprising against Jack with Jack's own son Charles. Number 4. Bizarra Any list of unbelievable versions of DC characters is likely to include a Bizarro version, and Wonder Woman is no different. But just a brief history of Bizarro first. The initial two versions were failed Superman clones by Lex Luthor, but we're focusing on the third iteration here. He has nothing to do with Lex at all, aside from inspiration. Bizarro 3 is still based off of Superman, but was created by the Joker using fifth dimensional powers. To oversimplify, he's Superman with Joker's imagination. All of his creations speak with slurred, broken grammar, have ashen, grey and pockmarked skin and limbs which don't quite fit properly. But they're more than just hollow zombies though, because bizarro creatures have some internal logic. They speak in opposites, so saying I love you means I hate you and vice versa. Some people love the bizarros and some hate them. Bizarro though was pretty great. Number 3. Crime Syndicate of America The Crime Syndicate of America, often shortened to the CSA, are a parallel universe version of the Justice League, only evil. Just like the regular Justice League, they also have a Wonder Woman, but she is very different in more ways than one. She goes by the name of Superwoman here, but it's clearly a riff off of Diana rather than Clark, with his CSA equivalent named Ultraman. She gains her powers from her universe's Amazons by killing them all, and as a result, her power set is almost identical to Wonder Woman's. One of the few different is that rather than the lasso of truth, it instead forces its victims to admit humiliating or dangerous secrets. It's an ingenious little twist that still utilizes the truth-telling power, but in a much more sinister way. Interestingly though, we don't actually learn her real name, as she goes by the alias of Lois Lane and is married to Ultraman. However, she frequently and openly cheats on him with Owlman, which is their version of Batman, showing yet again how twisted and sordid the crime syndicate really is. Number 2. A Straight Up Nazi Another Elseworld tale, this one, Whom Gods Destroy, features two versions of Wonder Woman, although the first is far more unbelievable. Set in the not-so-cheery future where the Third Reich never fell, this world is currently under Nazi rule with the Amazons by their side. Adonis has replaced Hitler as the Fuhrer, with Artemis and Athena opposing him. However, Wonder Woman herself betrayed Paradise Island for power and is now in league with Adonis and the Nazis, even wearing a swastika on her tiara. Lois Lane becomes embroiled in the story and is given Athena's powers to to become a Wonder Woman of her own. The two battle, and just like in real life, good triumphs evil and the Nazi Wonder Woman is defeated. Lois, now the reigning Wonder Woman champ, celebrates her victory by moving to the moon to live in a polyamorous lesbian relationship with Lana Lang and Superman, who is turned female by witchcraft during the course of this story, but only after he'd also been turned into a horse. As happy endings go, I didn't see that coming, but at least they are having a great time. Good on them. And number 1. Flashpoint now, Flashpoint Wonder Woman just crosses the line in ahead of Nazi Wonder Woman as the most insane version of the character to date. And a lot of these new styles revolve around her turning villainous in some way, but this one goes to new extremes. In this alternate reality, Diana is a brutal and bloodthirsty dictator, holding her country steadily under her boot. Unlike some other bad guy Wonder Woman versions, though, Flashpoint Diana takes a great deal of pleasure in her cruelty, not caring who she harms. She seduces Aquaman, but when questioned on it by his wife, she chops the Atlantean's head off and sends it to Aquaman as a gift. This kicks off a war between Atlantis and the Amazons, a conflict that she relishes in. Aquaman floods Europe to claim for Atlantis, while Diana takes up territory on the remaining dry land. And this conflict goes on to cause the death of over 30 million people between Ireland and Russia. Innocent bystanders aren't the only ones caught up in the conflict either. Steve Trevor, Wonder Woman's longtime love interest, is choked to death by Diana's bare hands. So seriously, this one has to be seen to be believed. And there we go, my friends. Those were 
10 insane alternate versions of Wonder Woman you won't believe exist. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. We can swing by Live and Let's Dice where I do all of my streaming outside of work and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself with love and respect because you deserve all of the best things in life and don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge. Now go out there and smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.